That's all it is really, a Google, a gimmick. And indeed, you might be interested to hear that a late 19th century hack wrote in the, in the Temple Bar magazine this profound thought, uh, what is fancy but a flum pump of the imagination? Oh, very nice, very nice invention. She did it very well. I thought well. so. So well. anyway, oh, it? yes. <laughs> yes. it's a gugor, it's a kind of a pudding, decorative type pudding, and it's a hairy sort of cloth. Patrick, choose away. It's a dugor, you said? Gugor. Gugor. Gimme. Uh, Tilly Valley, uh, fiddle dee dee, a thing of naught. <laughs> I've never heard of any of those words. <laughs> We're it's coming a to the valueless piece of bric-a-brac, if it's you like. A tilly That's a tilly willy. <laughs> well, it certainly isn't a tilly willy. Shakespeare is a good The dressy on the top, on the top of the tart. <laughs> <laughs> Without doubt, there's so much steam in that word that it has to be Frank's thick winter woolies. He did say that it was no, a hairy right? kind of cloth. That you wore and made you sweat. True or bluff, Frank? I'm the wife. Ah. Ah. No, nothing to do. I wonder if the tide has turned. The tide in the score, I mean. Let's see who gave the true definition of that uh, word. Not tide. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was the pudding. It's a, an ornamental pudding. One all. <laughs> one all. Scamander is the next word, and I think it's Patrick Moore's turn to define it. A scamander is a word from the humming and buzzing world of practical beekeepers, or, as they like to be called, apiarists. It is, in fact, a, a bee larva. It is a, a little, tiny, maggoty-like uh, embryo bee in which, you know, the, those hexagonal things in the cells of a honeycomb, there is, in fact, one in each of every one of those. Oh, of course. Really? Well, you never know. You never know. We shall only learn later on. Now, um, Nanette. Well, scamander is uh, a verb which means to meander. You could, in fact, say, I scamandered along to the studio today, meaning I meandered along to the studio today. <laughs> it, it's, um, did. Both the words are named after ancient uh, Greek rivers, which meandered and scamandered their roots from the source to the sea and <laughs> meandered their way back again. And so it's, uh, it's another word, a rather nicer word, I think, really, than meander. You say, well, I won't scamander on, I shall meander on. It means to meander. Yes, and now Patrick Campbell speaks to us. Smadder is a rough word used by blacksmiths. What? By what? Rough blacksmiths. Blacksmiths. <laughs> a rough word used by blacksmiths. And abrupt, they call it. Oh, I can't say it. <laughs> Leave all that on one side. If you're passing by a blacksmith's shop and you see a load of what we would call embers or ash or something lying outside, we would say that looks like. very much like. A vitreous ref refuse, wouldn't we? agreement, please. <laughs> we but, would. But we would all <laughs> be wrong. We, we would all be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because when the blacksmith sees all this stuff lying outside his shop, he calls it scamander. <laughs> uh, well, it's what we would call vitreous refuse, or ashes, or that kind of thing. It also means, uh, apparently, to meander, and it also means B lava. Russell Harty. I'm uh, <laughs> amazingly unimpressed by B lava, and always have been by B lava. I mean, you don't, you don't see a lot of it in a, in a day's march. You see a lot of it in Barbara Cartland. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't actually see it. <laughs> yeah, it's you you yeah, never see it. Yeah, Careful. Now then, uh, Nanette uh, cannot have her, her rivers meandering to the sea and then scamandering back again. I mean, they, they, when they get to the sea, they plot themselves into it. They don't sort of do a backtrack, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I like the idea of, of vitreous refuse on, on blacksmith's doorsteps, and therefore I will put my foot into a piece of vitreous refuse and say that you are telling the truth, Patrick Campbell. He did indeed say that that's what it meant, true or bluff. Patrick now reveals he all. He received a severe burn laugh. <laughs> Who gave 
the true definition of this interesting word. Oh, oh. Russell, you should have believed. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Holy Scamander, it is himself. <laughs> yes, it does mean um, it's a river and it means to Scamander or meander. Flingy, I think. Well, I don't know. What do you say, Russell? Flingy, it's, it's, uh, it's that sort of person who um, receives opprob opprobrium from people for doing the wrong things. It's a kind of Aunt Sally, a kind of uh, person at whom you fling things for doing the wrong thing. Like a stand-up comedian gets uh, custard pies and tarts in his face. And um, a person who uh, swallows in the middle of delivering a definition in Call My Bluff will get something flung at him. Uh, afterwards. <laughs> uh, it's that kind of stand-up Aunt Sally thing, the person whom things are flung against, a thingy. Thingy. Right. Gabrielle. Well, um, if we have any more hot summers like the one we've just had, I think we're going to see flingies all over Oxford Street, because in fact they are um, portable tents used by Indians to display their wares on the side of roads, you know, to display their cut price chapatis and curry powders. That's what they put up. It's a sort of a portable tent bamboo structure. All tents are portable. However... Yes, that's true. Yes, it's a tent and it happens to be it's it's made of bamboo. Tent. Yes, it's a tent type tent. Frank, your go. Come with me <laughs> <laughs> to the Isle of Zanzibar. Island of spices and cloves. Yep, we know about bugga, that. Bugga, 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 bugga. <laughs> There's a, it's a mixed place, and the mixed population, which are part Indian and part Negro, are called flingies, uh, because uh, flingy is the word for cloves, which they uh, used to harvest. I could sing you a song of a Fillingy at work. A Fillingy work song. Is it long? Do. Hmm? No, do it long. Well, no, 42 verses. <laughs> With the first line, perhaps. Yes. Close. Thank you. Don't, don't call us, we'll call you like that. <laughs> I should be. Little, little and good. Now, what we had was this. Someone who is flung at or sort of derided in that way, a tent and a Zanzibarian. Patrick Maher. Hmm. Uh, well, Russell's <laughs> man in the stocks receiving all that abuse, flingy. It's a bit sort of obvious, I think, isn't it? I think, I don't know. Zanzibar, Zanzibar singer. <laughs> um, a person named a Zanzibarian, a flingy. Yes, and Gabrielle was a sort of Curry tents, they move about. Portable tents. Tents. <laughs> Portable tents. Portable tents. All tents are Portable curry tents. Tents. Okay. Um, Well, I think I'm <laughs> going to, <laughs> with, with your authority, plump for <laughs> the, the person who receives the flung. You plumped? <laughs> we haven't had oh, someone plumping on this programme <laughs> since I can't think when. It's a personal pleasure to me when someone plumps. But I'll just tell you, yes, so who said that? Um, who was it, yes? Well, Russell. Yeah, it was Russell. Oh, thanks. I have, we, we haven't we have revealed anything yet? No. no. Oh, no you, you have to, to say now whether We're what you said was you. true or bluff. Oh! oh. It's, you it's see, fictitious. Patrick, the, the audience isn't clapping very loudly. Are you losing sympathy? Listen, <laughs> but isn't it peculiar? It's peculiar so about the fling -y because right. I would have thought that was the person who flung the, the fling. Flinger, that is. That's the flinger, isn't it? It's a flinger. flinger. You're right. Twice yeah. over. You should get double yeah. marks for that. <laughs> yes. A, a flingy is what is the person who gets flung at, of course. And the next three one, and the next word is Monji Bell. But I dare say, Nanette, you'll say it some other way, will you? No, you, you actually you're quite right. It is Monji Bell. It's uh, an enticing dish or potion that you put in front of an invalid or somebody who's been very ill and is now recovering, and somebody who has a jaded appetite. For instance, if, well, if Russell was recovering from flu or something, you might find boiled chicken and rice very non mongibel but a bottle of <laughs> Dom Perignon you might find very mongibel indeed. And that is the uh, <laughs> definition of the word. It's, it's an enticing and something rather delicious to put in front of somebody who's... I feel ill. Been ill. <laughs> <laughs> we shall have Dom Perignon immediately. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 
flung to a flingy. Patrick. Mongibel, little known but poetic word for Mount Etna, the <laughs> volcano in Sicily. <laughs> now, it's so little known and so poetic, yeah. I could compose a little poem <laughs> for you here and now. Please. Yep. <laughs> Let's have it. My memory of Mongibel is inexpungible. Tommy Moore. Is Mount Etna? I say one poem yeah. a night. I say one poem a night. Yeah, none. It's <laughs> two line poems, I'm all for them. <laughs> Patrick Moore. If I were, excuse me, if I were to sit here like that for a few minutes, if one of you over there knew the word mongibel or mongibel, you would undoubtedly accuse me of wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> how because in how fact, are you sitting? <laughs> because in fact, what it is, or what it was, was a piece of padding, sort of shaped like that, which men used to bung up their <laughs> sleeves of, of the garments. Which Thank were heavens! <laughs> <laughs> Just here. Uh, to pad out their shoulders, to en enhance their appearance, to give them a sort of a Tarzan, John Wayne look. It's a bit of padding that they used to wear up there, under the sleeves. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, they say it's a tempting dish. Mm -hmm. It's a shoulder pad to had your shoulders out with, obviously, and it's uh, another, it's a charming, poetic word for Mount Etna. Gabrielle Drake, your turn. Oh dear, we have dissension here. <coughs> oh no. As always. No? Well, all right. Um, I, I, I do think, though, that we have ruled out this delightful sounding calves foot jelly, or whatever it is, for invalids, <laughs> Mongebel, to be given to the dying patient. Might finish him off completely. Um... Mount Etna, Mount Bell. Well, that does sound pretty good. Yes, pretty good. But I think that in the end, it's the padding of the shoulders, Patrick Moore's shoulder padding that uh, yes, I'm, it I'm going to go for. Well, okay. yes. <laughs> it was Patrick Moore. Yes, he did say it. Now he's going to tell you. True or bluff? Again, it is a funny word. Who gave the true definition? It's an of course. It's an inmailing. Monji Bell is really another word for Mount Etna. Never heard it used, but mm. it's true. Oh, yes. Now, the next one is Marcan and um, uh, Gabrielle, I think it's your turn. No, uh, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it's my turn. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, certainly. Yes, certainly. Yes. Well, Marcan is a word which will be well known to anyone um, in the slightest degree religious. Really, it's 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 it refers to anything which is pertaining to or, or having some bearing to or, or reference to the gospel according to Saint Mark. Nothing more nor less than that. All right. And now we turn to Frank Muir. Those of our viewers who lie awake <laughs> night after night after night, can't get to sleep, saying to themselves, what is the name of that enzyme which decomposes <laughs> hydrogen peroxide <laughs> into yeast <laughs> by catalysis? <laughs> you may sleep soundly tonight. <laughs> it's Marcan. Two varieties, alpha Marcan, which is soluble, and beta Marcan, which isn't. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a sonnet there, it was so complete. Russell, your turn. Marcan is that kind of blood red wine that uh, is made from grapes that grow upon the sides of the hills in the Campania, which is also that area which is near Naples. I mean, the area around the Bay of Naples. Mm -hmm. Round about Etna, <laughs> near the Monji Bell. Uh, the, lit the more literate members of your group, which is particularly Nanette, whose husband owns a bookshop, will have read <laughs> um, recently in the Odes of Horace, um, not Catalysis, it's Horace that we're talking about, a translation about uh, this particular kind of wine, 
uh, I am so now confused between catharsis and horace that I must read the line in translation, which is, in mark and wine, some booze their time away. Booze? Booze. 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 Mm. Wrote, uh, booze. Booze. Catullus wrote that. No, he didn't write no, that. that, was no, that was, he said it's a translation. It's a translation of an Horatian ode in 16... Oh, no, it isn't. And never was, either. <laughs> Thank you. How dare you, sir. <laughs> Well, we are swapping the verses tonight. But it's an, they say this, it's an enzyme, it's any sort of reference, it's of St. Mark, reference to St. Mark, and it's this kind of red wine which gave rise to so much good poetry. Now, Nanette Newman. But you, you oh, make dear. up your own mind, Well, girl. well, very difficult. Um, Poker faces all. Yes. Now. <laughs> <laughs> She's obviously nervous. Frank, <laughs> I'm rather tempted to think that it is your sleepless nights wandering about all those enzymes and all those sort of things. But I'm also quite tempted to think, because he mentioned my husband's bookshop, which was so nice of him, I'm tempted to think that it's the, the thing all about the wine. But also, Gabrielle seems so improbable that it was all tied up and to do with religion that I really can't make a decision at all. I might have to <laughs> Then no, let's play something else. I, <laughs> guess, uh, you I think the because it's so improbable, I think I'll go for Gabrielle's. She said that it was um, of St. Mark, didn't you? To or I did Gabrielle. indeed. <laughs> Did mean that. Meant all that. Did mean it. 5 1. I wonder if they can improve on last week's. Don't you, Frank? <laughs> well, no, that was an unkind thing to say. Calhoun is the next word, and it's Patrick's turn to define it. A Calhoun is a. A camel. A, a saddle. A ca, uh, wait. A I've double got it. saddle. I've got it. Don't worry. <laughs> a Calhoun is a double camel saddle. That's it. What, two camels? <laughs> No, it's two a, saddles or two camels. Come it's on. a double saddle <laughs> or one camel. What, you, one, one person on top of the other or side? Wait, wait. <laughs> Listen, lad. <laughs> it's a double saddle on one camel. Oh, and on one side of it, you put, you put a woman. <laughs> and on the other side, you put another woman. No. Oh, how boring. It's a camel saddle for transferring concubines from harem to harem <laughs> on a camel. The yashmat, to know because you wouldn't know who they are, that's all it is. All right, now Patrick Murr, he tells us a thing. A kelyun is the, the Persian equivalent of, uh, of that, the pipe that uh, you suck and it's in uh, a bowl and you smoke, the, the smoke comes up through rose water, a hookah. And the bowl is often, uh, as is the Persian custom, engraved, you know, it's metal, and it could well have some sort of little message on it saying, uh, be oh. very careful about this smoking, it can damage your health, or something like that. You know? <laughs> yes, 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 why not? Um, Nanette. Uh, Kalyun is a, a yellowish clay-like substance that's found on the south shores of the Black Sea. Like what for? It's, um, <laughs> ah, I'm going to tell you what for, exactly what for. It used to be used um, until quite recently by the Tartars for soap. And, uh, Sand? It, uh, no, no, it's a substance, okay. it's clay, it's a yellowish clay, and it has, looks a bit like cheddar cheese, and it has a kind of waxy feel to it. Hmm. Well, it's, it's yellow clay used for those purposes. It's a double camel saddle with two ladies, or rather one lady either side, and it's a hook car, that kind of thing anyway. Frank, if you're quick, we'll get another go. I'm not a, all that keen on another go. <laughs> <laughs> I would be in your position. Well, we, 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 we can forget this, this toting um, pairs of concubines from uh, harem to harem. It, they shifted them very much. Um, the, I'm a bit worried about the Turkish happy hookah, uh, but I, I think I would have m maybe heard about that with the pipe business. But I think that it must be then back to the dread Nanette, who has beaten <laughs> his hands down, and this um, soap 
they made from you know, clay and stuff and muck. You choose then, dear friend. Yes. All right, why not? Right. Nanette, declare a, yourself. A true would be uh, welcome. Would you like this <laughs> If you have a choice there, and you're... Ah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> No. That was all rubbish, she said. We need now to know who gave the true definition. Yes. Yeah. It was Moa. <laughs> Stuff about the pipes was right. Now, <laughs> are they going to get 7 1 again? Only. Well, let's see, try Kellek. Uh, Frank. Fairly swift, you know. I can't now. I've lost steam. Kelleck uh, is, a, uh, is a kind of measure of fish box thing used by Arctic fishermen. It has to be exact dimensions to hold a sufficient weight or number of fish. Don't know the number or the weight. Very quickly. Well, yes, quickly. Roughly. It's, it was, it's a low, broad-brimmed hat that Macedonians wore. That'll do nicely. Uh, <laughs> Gabrielle. Thank you. Well, I mean, that distinguishes well, it. Well, if you're in the Middle East, don't travel across a river on a kelleck because it's a very unseaworthy raft. That'll do awfully well, Gabrielle. It's a Macedonian hat, it's a raft, not very seaworthy, and a box for fish. Patrick. It's a fish box. <laughs> he said sepulchrally. No! <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Frank, tell us, please, to all of us. Aren't you glad we went on, Frank? Now, yes. really, tell the truth. Who gave the true definition? The true one. Quick. Voila! But really, exactly what Gabrielle said, uh, a kelleck is a raft that ain't very... Uh, good, really. It'll, it'll sink. And now I have to declare the winners, not quite so distinctly as last week, but nonetheless the winners, Patrick Campbell and his team. <laughs> Next week, we shall be administering the kiss of life once again to the dodos in the Oxford English Dictionary. <laughs> Till then, goodbye from Patrick Mower. <laughs> Russell Harty. Bye. Nanette Newman, Gabrielle Drake, Patrick Campbell, Frank Muir, and goodbye. <laughs>